On Monday, September 20th, Canadians will be headed to the polls again for an early election. While Justin Trudeau states that this election is an opportunity for Canadians to decide who they want to lead them through the rest of the COVID-19 pandemic, he has been criticized by opposition leaders as well as the general public for a selfish election. Many argue that the resources used to call an election could be better spent on pandemic relief programs, support for Canadians stuck in Afghanistan during the Taliban takeover, and many other pressing issues. As of now, the Liberal Party of Canada holds a minority government. Many argue, however, that the early election was called so that the Liberals could go back to their 2015 majority. A recent Ipsos poll found that Justin Trudeau was seen as the best option for Prime Minister out of the other candidates, with 39% of respondents in indicating that they believe he should get re-elected. However, he was also likely of all candidates to have been seen as distrustful. Nevertheless, it is still too soon to say at this time whether Trudeau's dreams of a majority government will be realized. Hello and welcome. Today we are having our very first ever Inc. TV host discussion. I'm Ava Blackwell and I am joined with our other hosts, Julia Cosby and Simone Bunny. Welcome, ladies. Thank you for having us. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Very nice that we could all get together. Um, today we're discussing the topic of the 2021 elections, which have been polled and... Uh, put on for September 20th, which is coming up quick. Um, in your opinion, was this election called early out of concern for the Canadian public or is a power grabbing move on part of the Liberals? I personally think it was a power grabbing move. Mm -hmm. um, Trudeau is looking to change and get into a majority government at this point. Um, I, the reason I'd say it's power grabbing is because as far as I know, all the other leaders did say that they will vote for a, I think it was a no confidence motion in case it does come to the government. So, but he still chose to call elections. So mm -hmm. that's what I would lean more towards. And I'd have to agree with you exactly. Um, and then I also feel like, you know, they're at a minority. They're really tired, especially during this pandemic of having to agree, uh, like having to negotiate with the NDP, having to negotiate with the Conservative government mm -hmm. and to pass anything at this point because they are a minority government. So they just, they're taking a risk, they're taking a chance. There's been a lot of scandals, they don't care, they're going for the gold, they're going for majority. So I guess we'll see what happens. Interesting. I wonder if they're gonna attain majority. What do you think? I think that's hard to say because there have been a lot of scandals but in the last election, there were also a lot of scandals for the, liter the liberal election. Government. There's always going to be scandals. Uh, Sorry. Oh, mm. When, uh, Sorry. when you're the, can the leading candidate does uh, blackface, um, yeah, it's a pretty big scandal. But yeah. uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens in this election. Um, it's it's a throw. Um, who who really knows? I personally think there's a fifty-fifty chance it could go either way, depending on how people are looking at Trudeau after and how he handled the pandemic. Yeah, and I, I read earlier today somewhere, and I, the statistics are changing by the hour as mm -hmm. everything seems to be in the world right now, but uh, earlier today it said that 45% of Canadians would vote for the same party that they voted pre-pandemic, um, and something like 39 were going to vote somewhere else, and then the rest were undecided still. So we'll see if that... Uh, that holds. Do you think an early election should have been called? Do you think this is the appropriate uh, move to make on behalf of Canadians by the government? I think we could have waited two more years until the next election. You know, um, we we could have had better places for the money that is spent on the election to go towards. Um, we really didn't need this election at this time. And well, as far as I know, it's not a formal tradition, but it has been a tradition that we've been calling election earlier. I know Harper did it twice in 06 and then 08. But yeah, keeping for me, at least keeping the pandemic in mind, yeah, we could have totally waited it out. Hmm. Yes, especially with everything else going on in the economy right now. Yeah. Like, does the money need to be spent on an election at the oh. moment? That's, yeah. uh, that's a big question in the air. What kind of implication, if any, do you think that Canadians' lack of trust for Justin Trudeau will have on the 2021 election? 
Well, he, if there's a lack of trust there, then it could result negatively for him. Um, I still think maybe if he does win, he'll get, regain his minority government. I don't think he's going to go into majority government, but stranger things have happened. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen this election, as every election, it's, it's pretty hard to tell, especially early on, although it was called uh, less than two months away from the election. But we'll see. The Liberals are very prepared right now because they knew exactly what they were doing. The other parties are at the disadvantage because they didn't know exactly when the election would be mm -hmm. called, if they were even going to call an election. So uh, the Liberals are definitely at an advantage with regard to that. I kind of want to say the opposite in the sense that in terms of Trudeau's lack of trust, I think that comes from the way he handled the pandemic. So we didn't have enough vaccines, the PPE kits, the, the government was very delayed in procuring them for Canada itself. And I think that's going to be a big factor in how or how people are going to be voting. So I'm not sure if the Liberals have an advantage there, but we shall see. Interesting. Yeah. Um, what candidate do you think is the most promising? Again, I think that like all candidates, um, they've got their pros, they've got their cons, they've got their followers, their diehard followers. Um, but I think at this point, um, it's anyone could win. But I do think the Liberals have an advantage right now just because they were the ones to call the election. Mm -hmm. Although the party that's always in government are, you know, they have something going against them. They have a big red target on their back. Mm -hmm. So well, we'll see what happens. I agree there. It's anyone's game, but I think in that sense, I kind of want to say that maybe the Conservatives will have a bit of a more advantage. Mm -hmm. They are running behind. They are falling behind, as you said, since Liberals were the one who called the election, they more ha have more of an advantage. But I'm not sure just how far that advantage might go. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Do you think they have the advantage strictly because uh, Canadians have lost trust in the Liberals or because they actually have a promising campaign? I think it's more the trust thing. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, get this. The Toronto Star has predicted that four issues, climate change, affordability, the pandemic recovery, and racial justice and reconciliation will decide the election this year. Ladies, do you agree with this assessment? Are there any issues other than these that you think will or should play a major role? I think the first two are huge issues. Um, the, the other issues are obviously big deals and are very trendy to talk about right now and have been in the news for for a very long time. But I feel uh, with the climate change all, and affordability and affordable housing and all those big issues are kind of like top of the line. That's what all the candidates are talking about right now. So we'll see what happens. Um, I did see on Jagmeet Singh's TikTok, he was <laughs> boasting about um, how, you know, being more sustainable, uh, being more conscious, I guess, about the kind of car you buy. And then there is another TikTok where he's dancing to his private plane with his name on it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of interesting things going on in this election mm -hmm. and a lot of uh, big talking points uh, with regard to affordability and affordable housing. Um, I do know that the Conservative and Liberals uh, both have similar points that they're bringing to the table uh, mm -hmm. with regard mm -hmm. to um, not letting foreign buyers uh, purchase houses purchase houses for two mm -hmm. years, um, whereas in addition to that, the Liberals are saying that they'll also bring in more uh, tax exemptions for, for housing and for affordability, where the Conservatives are saying within three years that they will build um, one million houses, which um, I, I do have questions for how, how are they going to achieve this goal mm -hmm. and at what cost, and with the tax exemptions, um, I know there, there's many plans in place, but um, just some more specifics with re regard to that. I completely agree with everything you just said, but two things that I think are missing is one, healthcare, not in terms of pandemic recovery, but just that the pandemic has showed us just how fragile the healthcare system here is. Mm -hmm. um, we went into multiple lockdowns because we did not have enough beds. Beds or anything. anything for that matter, exactly. No kits, no masks, nothing. Vaccines took a really long time, so we need to focus on healthcare. 
And another thing that I would like to touch on is the situation in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, Biden had said in his election campaign, while he was campaigning, that he was planning to pull out of Afghanistan, but Trudeau didn't really do anything about it. We still have Canadians and allies that are stranded there at the moment, and I just think that Trudeau is more focused on campaigning right now than or his priorities are just set a bit Isn't differently. Isn't it funny? Because wouldn't it be such a great thing for his campaign if he put effort into getting mm -hmm. everybody out of Afghanistan? Yeah. Like, yeah. come on, Trudeau, if you're listening, I completely get those people out of there. Yeah, and I think and it'll benefit your campaign. Sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're absolutely right. And I think he promised, I think it was 20k people of Afghanistan's that that could come here. And I think so far there's only been. As of Monday, 2K? it was 1100. Yeah, so I don't less know what it than is 2K. Now. Yeah, and, and it's been a while. The states like, have brought in over 17,000. Yeah. I mean, mind you, there's a lot more resources for and that. And more kind space. Of yes, don't get me wrong. Of, of course, there's stuff, a lot more but, space there, too. I mean, but. Canadians were there as Canadian military officers for many yeah. years. And with NATO, and I believe also with the UN. UN as we well. Were, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Were, we, we had a huge presence. We put a lot yeah. of effort into that yeah. uh, under many governments yeah. under liberal and conservative yeah. um so i think we need to kind of finish up what we started here yeah <laughs> you know? his, his focus shifted very fast from too the way too quickly as soon as the election was announced his i think everything just kind of went directly to one kind of lane so his, yeah. his thinking went now we're campaigning i want that majority government and Saying I don't care would be a long stretch, but... Well, with the majority government, he could pass or do whatever he wanted. So in that way, um, he wouldn't have to answer to anyone. Mm, true. It's true, but... That's true. I, I don't know if he's... Um, it seems like he's on. He's moving back from something rather than mm -hmm. forward into something. Does it make sense? He's on the defense. It's it's what it seems like no, to fair. me, but I'm not sure. Okay, building off of what we were uh, speaking about, pardon the pun, uh, Maru Public Opinion Poll found that the top concern is improving affordability and cost of living, followed by change, battling government deficit, and creating jobs and growing the economy. Which party do you think is best equipped to handle these? One person could have one opinion of how they would solve these issues and another person would highly disagree. Well, I think this issue should be solved in this way and I disagree with your opinion. Right. So I guess it really depends who you're talking to and each party is, is, is different approach but very similar in a lot of their approaches. So I guess it really depends like who you're talking to, what their perspectives are and I guess we'll see when people vote how they vote and which opinion, I guess, is most popular? Yeah, I, don't, I think it's hard to say right now who's more equipped to do what, mostly just because everyone has a different way of dealing with things. Yes. So I think it's very hard to tell who's going to be more equipped to take care of it, but they all seem to have a plan. Let's just see who knows how to implicate it very well. Yes, and I mean, traditionally, correct me if I'm wrong here, ladies, but just based on my experience, traditionally liberals have been better at creating social change and implementing, you know, issues of equality and equity and stuff, and conservatives have been better at implementing physical and fiscal change. I agree. I think when Harper, the recession in 2009, when Harper was in charge, he was able to kind of take care of that. He opened up the markets. He tried to make more jobs by doing the whole Manufacturing Canada products. So in that sense, right, with liberals, I'm not quite sure how they're actually taking it. Well, they're it. great with climate change and yeah. supporting that. It's, it's just interesting because we're trying to balance a lot of things that traditionally uh, one party has been stronger at changing one of these issues, like battling climate change, mm -hmm. and another party, conservatives have been better at like deficit recovery and, uh, and, and, and the economy in general. So it'll be interesting to see one party handle all of these. Try to, because these are, I mean, to me, all of these are legitimate concerns yeah. to my daily life and to the to my future, my yeah. imminent future, you know? Even especially with cost of living, like people our age, I want to yes. say, if you were to go buy a house right now, I, I, I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't think I can't afford it, that's for sure. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's especially in Toronto, in the especially larger cities. In Toronto. So yeah, it's, so. that needs to be solved. For but I also care about the environment. I, I want to mm -hmm. know that I'm buying a house that isn't costing us our fresh air, yeah. you know? Yeah those kinds of things. Ladies, do you have anything else you want to talk about while we're all here together? 
Yeah. I think it's I, th I think it's really nice to have us all three together and start to to open this discussion between hosts and it's really nice to hear your thoughts Julia and Simone and I'm learning a lot from these panel discussions well, as thank well. you so much for having us and I think this was a great discussion I love talking to both of you guys and especially about a topic that's so relevant to all of our lives in Canada yeah absolutely it was great thanks for having us great thanks for stopping by we'll see you again soon <laughs> thank you for watching our discussion today remember to subscribe like and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss any of our latest content